this is good. Doing legs and feet takes a while, so I'm going to try to shortcut it as much as I can. But uh, it is still going to take some time. One, first off you have to do is get in your reference information. I had searched everything. There are, killdeer is not a, a bird that has a lot of information out there as far as dimensions and everything else. I used a couple of references. One was, uh, this was a um, David Millhart's book and it he had in it some dimensions on the uh, killdeer the size of things and this and then you can go on the internet measure you know take a picture of off the internet if you got a nice square picture to side view or what have you you can get some dimensions compared to what it's supposed to be get a ratio and then ratio out other parts of the bird and get dimensions Okay, this gave me dimensions for uh, wing, tail, bill, taurus, and middle toe. So it's got two dimensions on the legs in this, the taurus and the middle toe. So I could then go to pictures and figure out what the dimensions of the bird feet is, are. From that point, you can say, okay, I'm going to do it. I decided to do a bird because a lot of pictures of killdeer, they're kind of standing on their toes a bit. So I decided to do one in which uh, the middle toe was going to be the structural part that goes into the ground. It's going to support the bird. So instead of having uh, the leg come straight down and into the thing it leave a, a, a peg showing I was, went off the middle toe I then decided how to make the, the structure so that it is the easiest and with the least amount of uh, things I had to cut and paste with it so what I have done is taken this middle toe, that's where it's going to be posted to, uh, to the base, and came up with it going up the back side of the leg. Because you have a heavier uh, structure on the main uh, bone of the thing, and it has a uh, ligament going down the back of the leg which is uh, shown on almost all your birds and it's a smaller rib out there so what I did was use the brass that was going to be for the middle toe and carried it up the back of the leg as the and then we'll solder onto it the uh, taurus the main bone and up uh, on the leg. Since almost all pictures of uh, killdeer have show the uh, the heel and going up the uh, leg this direction, uh, that is the shape of the foot that I was I'm going to do. For knowing things about the killdeer was the one in which I puzzled out quite a bit and I could not find a picture which showed a small kind of toe coming out the back which most of the shorebirds have. Now this is a casting of a what a yellow legs uh, leg is and I'll pass that around and I want to point out and I've marked on it that the different bones here, each toe, the back one that comes out here on most birds and, and is like your thumb, but it has just 
one joint and then the, the nail end of it. So there's one bone on it. The next one over has got two bones plus the nail. The next one has three bones plus the nail. And the uh, farthest one has four bones plus the nail. This is what happens on almost all birds. So if you are interested in where the uh, different toes bend, these different ones have these points which have the joints. I'll pass this one around just so you can see the anatomy of a leg. And so you can have that. And I've got lines on it to mark where things are. Now, to build it, what I am going to do is I have a block of wood, I put a point in it for a pin. Uh, I guess I'll have to use, do, do, do. I'll use this as, yeah. Okay, for that peg, I'll use a piece of brass that's, oh, a little over a quarter inch long. Where do you get your brass? Well, I can go to Fratelloni's Ace Hardware on Grand Avenue, either one of them. They have them. Har uh, hobby stores have brass. All these are in 32nd uh, inch dimensional increments. Right on up. There, you, it's amazing how much is available. I can show you. I probably got most of it. <laughs> At least some samples of it here. Okay, I put, cut the pin. Now, what I will do is I'm going to bend the main toe, uh, center toe, and uh, up the back of this. And so I'll just take, uh, let's see if I have, is this long enough? Let's see on this, Dean. Yeah, it's long enough. Okay. I'll start out by, oh, in bending brass, sometimes you want to anneal it so it's easy to bend. Otherwise, it's awful hard. It's really, it's, it's rigid, it's solid. And you can do it with a torch. Uh, that gets, uh, is one way, uh, just to heat the brass up so it's anneals is the other thing is I got a, an ancient soldering gun here it's what probably 60 years old so it's been seen better days I'll put it that way and I'll anneal some points on it I'm just basically turn it on and just heat the hell out of a couple points on this brick And that will allow me to bend it e easily. And it, I can bend it later. Uh, I don't have to do it right immediately. And I'll, I'll get a couple other places on it. Uh, actually, I really don't need it many other places because they're fairly gentle so I'll just do it there on this one. Thanks. And then What I've done is put a little kind of hook in it and that's where the nail is at the end of the toe. Now, the length of the uh, middle toe 
basically the way he gave dimensions in here said from basically the back of the nail which is on the end toe to the taurus is supposed to be 0.9 inches long so we'll measure that off And that will be like that and my marker. Okay, now I'm going to, behind that, I'm going to be bending, so I'll heat that up again. have to get a ways from where I'm heating it because this will generally carry temperature quite a ways. <coughs> and it is taking me all right it's starting to heat up. Okay getting a little warm. Okay. That should be enough to kneel it. Is the sharp toe on this foot an inside toe or an outside toe? The, the short one, let's see, this is Okay, this is inside here. Okay. The, it, it goes like your hand is, if this is that back toe, okay. this is the first one, second one, third, and third. Okay, so it goes, and that's, this is the outside. So it goes around that way. So the inside one has three joints, the outside one has four. The inside, it has two uh, bones and a, a joint in total. The outside one has one, two, three, four, and a toe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I'll turn this around. I am going to make it so that the other player in. I want to because I want to get it tight together. Then I will turn it out. I want the bird to be on its toes. Oh, yeah, this was going to be the center toe. Oh, no, that's right. Hey, I was going the side ones. This is, this is the center toe, so I need to correct that. Let's see, get that. When you kneel it, you can do quite a bit of bending to it. This will be uh, a 
would like to grind that to a little bit of shape, so I need to do a little grinding here. And that will be, let's see, there it is. Oh, I can use this. I can use this. They say this takes. doing is just shaping the end of this yeah so that will fit kind of right onto so there we can keep them together here Getting things to be, be held in position is often a problem. I guess that's not going to hold that way. I should have tried this at home better, I guess. Maybe I'll just hold it well enough. This is a liquid flux. trying to solder it. Technical difficulty here.
Attaching it a couple places that holds it together so I don't have to hold it all the time. And then I will also, that gap is going to end up filled up with solder. Uh, To make things simple for attaching to this peg, I'm going to. Oh, okay. Uh, move things. The peg's going to be there. I'm going to. I think I'll tin it first. Use, use solder with flux. Okay. Okay. Basically what I did is put a little bit of solder on the end of the pin so that it uh, will, doesn't take that much heat to melt any additional solder. Put that into place. It is hot. So I had a place here on this board where I was going to put this. And now I will, that will be about that far. Tin it at that point. Let's say this generally takes a lot more time than a demonstration has allowed, but okay. <coughs> okay, now I can take attached. The length of the TARS is 1.75 inches. 1.75. So from there up to that point and we will mark it. Okay. 
And what I will do point there's going to be the knee I'm going to take and bend For you? Yep. When you put when you started the two pieces together, was that for strength or bulk? It's because they have to go together, and it's because it's to hold them together. Now, in some, I'll show one here in which I actually had one of the two cut, and then two straight pieces soldered on here. Uh, this one I just took and bent both of them because there's going to be a fairly good size knot of a joint there. So the fact that it may not match completely doesn't matter. It's going to go in this. And basically uh, when you see things built together and on any of these, they the tendons there stick out, they're smaller diameter, they, they're just there. Um, okay, now what I will... Slatter the upper side here, and I will use some more of this flux. Okay, 
have that together. Now to get the toes. This is a, this was what? Uh, <coughs> Three thirty seconds. Uh, what's the? Let me check that. Here. Okay, four, six. Yeah, three. Th the uh, heavier rod is three thirty seconds. The smaller ones an eighth. Okay, uh, I now have them soldered together. They're down to here. I'm going to make the two toes uh, side there on the sides. The, these two toes. What I will do is again anneal. Now, I'm going to make it with kind of a peg beyond where the toe will be uh, so that it fits into the wood here so that it, I have something to hold it in place in the... Okay. Now, the toes are, I calculated it out from the others. Let's see, where did I have that calculation? <coughs> Half inch to the thing, plus about a quarter inch, a little bit more to run. And so I will. Okay, where's, there it is, hiding on me.
and then I can spot here. I guess I should have had this pre-annealed or something so it didn't take so long. Sad, are you doing two toes right now? Kind yes, of I'm doing two, two. I'm doing the other two toes. Yeah. <coughs> And can you feel the brass getting softer? Is it heating up? You know, when to bend it. Uh, yeah, I can. Although that's, uh, yeah, I can. And I just it, you start seeing it change color a little bit by mm -hmm. oxidizing and that because of the heat. And uh, now let's see, I got those two, and I'm still a little warm, so I don't have to be careful here. Okay, I'll get this together a little bit tighter. And I will now bend them back the other way. And then I will do some tinning of this surface here. And then try to assemble. Oh. I got that thing way off. I got to do, do the, the holes a little bit different there. That's because I put the pig in a different place than I had done it on the other one. And it's a little bit long on that. Okay. So I'll a lot of times you do trial and error and adjustments. So this is a little too long on these toes. How will I do that? So,
probably be better off to starting over and doing another one, but we don't have the time to do that. So you're seeing adjustments made on the fly here. <coughs> so you're just shortening the toes? I am shortening the toes, yes. Consequently, I'm bending in areas that weren't really annealed. So I have to put a little more muscle into it.
now, just about there. Hard to get it all in a steam position, <laughs> You mind over matter. <laughs> Okay, we'll now solder this joint. Okay. Well, at this stage, we now have a foot that's show you what it is supposed to look like when I clean it up. <laughs> so there's this is what I've done before. So that's solder all here? That is all solder, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. you build that up with solder? Well, I, no, I don't. I just basically make sure that it's firmly attached. Mm -hmm. Basically, so that it, uh, it's going to get covered with epoxy. I'll show you the next step, what epoxy looks like. Yeah. But on this one here, I have, you know, the thing going all the way through. One that's been uh, basically just clipped off and uh, kind of thinned down a bit, and this one ground to shape. So, and so that's uh, what we're doing. Is that regular side or regular side? That's also a regular side. It is. It's okay. In other words, these days it all has silver in it, okay? Yeah. But silver solder is something that's a good thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I've got it here. I'll show you what it is. But you end up with the butane charge yep. and high temperature to do it. Or you want extreme strength, it ends up being stronger than the brass. And so it's good. Yeah. So if you really want a strong joint in which you're saying uh, you've got a big bird and you're just got a point that it's being suspended on, that's, yeah, you use that there. So it's, uh, and that's just rosin flux? The flux, I've got rosin flux. And I just filed this, I've seen it before, it's uh, liquid flux that I was using here. And it seems to, okay, spreads out really yep. nice, I think. So you can, they're, they're cold enough now, you can hold them. <laughs> okay, and then I'll show you. The next stage is to put epoxy on it, shape the epoxy, and after it's hardened, you might do some final shaping on it. This is one that I, you know, played around with. So that's what I've done in the next stage. So have you ever done a wooden leg, what, brass, yes. toes? Oh, uh, well, you know yeah, what I mean. basically just the feet. Yeah. Uh, it, I've done basically carved the whole legs and feet and everything uh, on the bird. The whole carving of it. So I haven't, uh, now if I, I've done, uh, uh, should I say, I've done brass uh, legs, 
and cast feet uh, for castings. I've done uh, in places, I'm trying to remember whether I've ever just had legs come down and then carved the feet into the, uh, a wood base. That's easily possible. Uh, easy to do that. In fact, it's, it's probably a, a little easier than sometimes making the feet. Uh, it, it's going to be a matter of strength, basically, of what you do. Now, for those of you, uh, anything with a web foot, at this point, you would then uh, take sheet brass or then this, shape it, maybe your texture it, and solder it uh, to the base of it, because that's just between. Uh, that's uh, basically how, we, how you would do it. Uh, I'm going to say, an hour's time is not enough. Uh, I generally spend a half a day on a foot you know, to, to get it down to the epoxy part and everything else. So it takes time. Uh, if you can find an easier way of doing it, carving the whole thing out of wood is fine, uh, or carving, uh, having brass leg for strength that way, and carving it into a, a base a piece of wood, th that would be easily done. Uh, and as I said, I have done the entire bird with the legs and feet part. So do you use some sort of uh, call it a shellac or something to put over the metal so you don't get any oxidation or anything like that? that could okay, normally uh, if you, I have brass, the first thing I would do is I polish up that brass before I try solder. The brass has to be clean first. Mm -hmm before you do a side uh, Then you, you should have a flux of some type uh, to prevent it oxidizing the mm -hmm. uh, Depends on the equipment you have. I've got, as they say, ancient history electrical gun there. I use that tonight. Rather than light up a, the torch, I do have the, tor the torch here. It's a little, and I can silver solder. The, sil the solder has to be silver solder. You have to clean off the oxidation and the silver so you don't try to get oxide in with the mix. So things like that. Um, the, the toes, I just, you know, bent them here. Uh, sometimes I then hammer them flat, you know, if, if the uh, I need thickness there because of the talons are shaped that way. I then use a hammer and a, an anvil of a, a, a thing to shape them. Um, I've got pictures of various birds I've done and you, some of them you can see that they are, if, if I have a perching bird that's grasping a limb, you can't get those feet to grasp that are cast without end up breaking toes. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating when you get it all done and a toe breaks off. Mm -hmm. And now what do I do? <laughs> so that type of thing. So, yeah. But uh, you can, uh, can make, uh, you know, feet in any form you want to. You want to do feet for your heron? I, you know, basically this technique works. If you want, uh, well, I'm probably going to do feet for the sandhill crane. Okay. Uh, yeah. Way. Now sandhill crane. I'm not sure whether it has that hind toe or or not on the, on the back of it. Yeah, I think they do. I, I think they do. I think they do feet. have that. But uh, it was just that you know I was surprised that everything I found, the pictures in that, did that on this killdeer. Well, it's probably been running on land and rocks and what have you, 
so long it has never had to grasp anything for eons. Therefore, it just lost that toy. It never used it. It disappeared out. So, is there any questions anybody has on this? I can show. All kinds of uh, different shaped brasses and everything. I know it's, uh, you know, if you want to do uh, leaves and other things, that's another technique. Uh, if you want uh, a, uh, you've got a duck that's flying into a marsh and you want to uh, stick it at a cattail uh, flying over that, done that too. <laughs> I haven't done full-size ducks. I've done miniature, <coughs> but it's, I've done that. So. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. I've got pictures of some of the uh, birds that yeah, are fairly recent. Yeah.